we've been talking about how drone pilots are dropping like flies, quitting the U.S. Air Force by the hundreds. The government says it's because they're overworked, but activists say it's because of the traumatic effect of what they're doing, killing people. These uh, drone uh, pilots, I'll call them pilots, are basically executioners. Former drone pilot, what he thinks of this assessment. Joining us in the now is ex-Air Force pilot and drone operator Brendan Bryant. Brendan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you spent six years, as far as I understand, operating uh, from uh, a dark container. This is something that, how you describe it. How do you feel? I hope you heard our previous guest. He was from nodrones.com calling drone operators essentially murderers. <laughs> well, uh, I just want to clarify first that uh, I'm not a pilot. I'm a was a sensor operator. Um, but I mean, essentially, that's he's not lying. Um, as far as I can tell, we the shots that I took, uh, we didn't even really know who we were firing at. You're basically saying that drone operators are not pilots. Am I correct? No, there is a pilot. But I, there's two people that fly these things, and one's a pilot and one is not. And I was the not. So what does the not do exactly? Uh, we control the camera on the aircraft. We back the pilot up on everything that they do, and we guide the missile into impact. And what made you think about what you were doing and eventually decide to stop? Uh, it was accumulation of a lot of things, actually. Uh, mostly that the leadership was uh, lacked quality, um, but it was also th that I was questioning the actions that I had participated in, uh, and I couldn't stand myself uh, for doing it. For doing what exactly? For. Uh, participating in actions where we uh, killed people that we, we really didn't know who they were. And then uh, seeing on the, that leadership and people on television like Obama and Brennan would uh, say that there is no civilian casualties. There is, uh, everything is perfect with this and there was no oversight. And I, I just know that the inside of the entire program was uh, diseased. And uh, people need to know what uh, happens uh, to those that are on the inside. People need to know the lack of oversight, the lack of uh, accountability that happens. Um, and to be honest, when I read that report about the whole uh, Air Force can't keep its uh, operators or pilots and doing everything that they could to retain them. It doesn't surprise me. It was the, the same 10 years ago. It was the exact same scenario and they are still dealing with it because they misuse those that are in the program and they uh, don't know why people are reacting the way that they are. I want to talk about care. that because you obviously felt accountable. That's essentially why you stopped. But how Aware are uh, were some of your colleagues? You said that you would watch these leaders whose policies essentially uh, operators are holding up. How much do you per se talk amongst yourselves about what you're doing, about what you feel? How conscious are the men behind the drones? Uh, well, for a while there, I thought that a lot of them had uh, uh, a conscience, uh, but it turns out that they don't. Um, many of them don't, uh, from the reaction that I've gotten from a lot of my former colleagues. And uh, they are caught up in the same black hole putrid system that is either going to crush you or you're going to conform uh, to it. Did you have trouble once you quit and started speaking out against these policies? Uh, you mean like officially? Officially, unofficially, what was the response you felt? I mean, what did you go through? Uh, well, uh, like the Did you have old reaction. friends that perhaps turned on you once you started oh, yeah. speaking uh, out? Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Uh, pretty much uh, everyone that I knew uh, turned their back on me uh, once I did. And uh, the worst the worst part about it is is that I actually started speaking out about this stuff because there was so much misinformation out there that um, I felt that someone needed to tell the truth. And uh, I was in a pretty decent position to be able to do so. All right, Brian, I know it must be difficult to you for talk about this, but I have to ask you this because our audience has also been sort of uh, adding to this theme today over the past two days that we've been bringing up. If you had a chance to speak to the family of one of your victims, what would you tell them? Um, that I'm sorry. Uh, I actually talked with a lady uh, whose husband uh, was killed, whose husband and brother was killed in a drone strike. I talked to her face-to-face, uh, -face and she asked me why her husband and brother had to die. And uh, they weren't bad guys. And uh, I just looked at her and I said, I, I don't know. And that's not the really the best thing that I can tell someone who's asking questions about why someone that they cared about was killed and they need to know the answers. And the, the really truth, hard answer to say is that I'm sorry that uh, the mistake happened and uh, I'm doing everything that I can to prevent further mistakes from happening. All right, X, uh, I'm not even going to say your position because I messed it up in the beginning. Uh, I think our audience understood everything and probably really appreciates you speaking out. Brendan Bryant, thank you so much for being in the now and sharing your story. Thank you.